for, uh, uh, for this great overview of the real challenges of, of today's IoT uh, security and for preaching uh, about collaboration, which is uh, definitely highly required. Now, moving on from the uh, national level point of view to the industrial point of view, I'm happy to uh, call to the stage Ms. Nasreen Rezaei, Senior Vice President, Global Chief Information and Product Cybersecurity Officer at General Electric. Good morning, everyone. Um, bit of delay, it's coming. Thank you for the introduction. For those of you who may not know fully the GE business, we operate in um, um, eight verticals from aviation to transportation to power business, and we have a horizontal digital industrial business. Um, the footprint that we uh, support in my cyber organization, Defense, it's close to 350,000 employees, over 400,000 devices. And we started an intentional strategy about three, four years ago to operate and exist in the cloud. So we have started that hybrid journey and we're in a hybrid mode, but our goal is in a couple of years to primarily operate operate in a couple of our uh, cloud providers that we work with and ultimately our own Predix platform. The reason I'll tell you that is because the story and kind of the journey of the practitioner that I'd like to talk to you about is really the build out and the readiness and the architectural mindset that we need to have to really get to that existence. Many of the speakers this morning talked about what we need in security. It's not about throwing a whole bunch of technologies and hoping that uh, you, know, you get security as a result, but it's really having a systems and architecture approach and really looking at cybersecurity as a business of risk management. I won't go through this in too much detail because many of my peers talk about this, the same speed to which GE moving to cloud, many of the threat actors are also, right? They're operating through the adoption of cloud, social engineering, and all aspects of phishing or even good old, old methods of DDoS to attack us. As the Prime Minister mentioned this morning, it is big business, so we need to tackle it with big, really systems thinking approach. Again, in the context of the incidents that we have dealt with, almost if you say a couple of uh, two years ago, there were so many data breaches that we almost most enterprises kind of got numb to, to attacks, right? And the last couple of IoT major attacks woke us up in the sense of uh, thinking that what the cyber researchers have been telling us for some time now, it's reality and it's here. And the argument that I make to my peers, especially in industrial space, the CISOs, that we can no longer, the accountability that we have to our boards to say, OT security is not my job. They, many of you have been called in to have a discussion with your board. You now know that IT security, as much as is your job, as it is OT security, because it's all interconnected. So, as cybersecurity is definitely a corporate risk in all and most enterprises, the other major corporate risk that we're all dealing with, especially industrial space, is basically decline of productivity. And that pattern has been existing for some time now. We in industrial enjoyed productivity of three to five percent for a long time from 90s up to 2005. Five, three to five percent consistently year over year. But we have experienced a decline in starting 2011 and, and that productivity has gone to about 0.3 percent. So many industrials have shifted their focus in leveraging technology to really create digital transformation. And that, with that comes GE's introduction and entry three, four, five years ago into introducing a horizontal we call digital industrial. 
That's sitting at the heart of a first digital industrial cloud platform we call Predix, with capabilities such as asset performance management, um, digital threat around automation and modernization of uh, manufacturing, and to really enable digital industrial who are our partners and our customers in all the verticals that we operate to really take an advantage of the, the new innovation in technology, the analytics that they can get from the assets that they have in their infrastructure through machine learning, through analytics, to really gain some of the productivity that they have lost in the past few, few years. To give you a sense and an example of what I mean, I'll give you an example of a partnership, for example, Predix and the digital business has with uh, BP. So BP Predix, with leveraging Predix and the industrial platform of GE, they can install in 30 of their platform, um, the platform, the Predix platform, and really tackle the unplanned downtime that they deal with. And this in their own projection, is expected to bring about 200 million saving. We recognize that this is tremendous opportunity for GE and also for digital industrial, but at the same time, we also recognize what effectively this, um, this offers as a solution. It's more interconnectedness of assets and devices in an environment that in the past 20, 30, 40 years have been very much air-gapped and controlled and under very much regulatory control environment. In that regard, we take cybersecurity very seriously as a key component of this end-to-end -end design. And that's why from a uh, kind of a focus area, we have combined how we think about enterprise security and product security at GE. So what does that mean? In, in, at the highest level, three constructs. We think about how we build product, how we defend the enterprise, and the commercial offer, offering for our digital industrial customers. How do we ensure that we build security in, into our products? how we defend the enterprise, that our customers are trusting their data into our platform, and where the, the gap exists in the OT space, you know, coming up with commercial offering with partners and technology providers, and many of them are here in Israel to really take a holistic approach to our customers and to the market. On the enterprise side, I shared with you the story of our shift to cloud. So you can look at my cybersecurity organization, and remember I talked about having eight businesses. My organization operates almost as a service provider to the rest of GE. So in this shift of the entire workload and platform that's going to the cloud, on the enterprise side of the house, we're thinking in terms of cloud in two folds. Number one, how do we adopt cloud with all the native capabilities that the maturity of new cloud provider offers without recreating them, buy into the protection controls and mechanisms that they offer us, and number two, run our services natively in the cloud so that we can give the best security value back to our own um, employee base. The second one is that if you assume that some of those capability you get from the cloud providers, then we have to shift all of our investment in terms of architecture, in terms of technology, to data protection and application level protection, which is something that my peers and uh, the CISOs in this room would, would tell you that where a lot of us are behind because many of us are still thinking network level control when it comes to protection. And I would say the delta of detection capability and response capability becomes the one that we cannot get from the cloud providers. Those that are our biggest problems and those are that align with the threat actors that we track and the type of detection uh, capabilities that we need to enable the existence of this big organization called G in the cloud. And I would say the last one on the enterprise side is the weakest link. 
No matter how much regulatory control comes onto uh, large enterprises, we have a lot of money still, and we can go after building security. The, the weakest link are the third-party suppliers, both on the product side and on the enterprise, that are part of this ecosystem with us, but uh, unfortunately, they like some of these security controls. So we're putting tremendous focus and attention on them. On the digital side, as we're shifting more and more into a digital organization, now we not only have hardware engineers at GE, but software engineers that are popping like millions of lines of codes on a daily basis. The mindset of a security organization that you know, assesses the code after it's out, it's, it's very old school. The thinking is that we really need to shift into secure software design development processes that are fully automated. And it's very, it's a big to do when you have to work that for a, you know, 350,000 person organization, but it's a big charter for us. On the secure edge to cloud, and product security. It's a partnership between cybersecurity and all the engineering functions at GE to really ensure that we develop edge to cloud as a market differentiator with, for secure um, cloud deployment. What I mean by that is if any of the industrials have one of GE assets, take a power turbine or, or a renewable engine, and they are sensor enabling it and, and tr the data traverses out from our customer networks out into our cloud pr pr and predicts platform. The thinking and the mindset is that it is not enough for each product to be secure, but it's really the horizontal that needs to be secure. So we have instituted a program that takes um, element of govern, protect, detect, and respond, and applies that to all practices of engineering across GE. In the govern uh, um, phase or component of our protection, it's a NIST-based framework, and every product has responsibility to adhere those, to those principles, and that gets governed by us. In response to protect, it's really thinking from a view of lens of the customer going left to right, how do we need to ensure that our products are device assessed, blue team, red team assessed, threat models, and have natively trust um, assessment capabilities that we can demonstrate to our customers. Detection is an area that we are doing development, but it's also a tremendous opportunity for technology providers to partner with us. And lastly, an integrated CERT and PCERT process. So I always think in three and five. So when I think about defending the enterprise, I'll say to the piece of the puzzle on top, what I say, establish clear priority. That's kind of, to me, it's cyber hygiene. If you have $10 to spend in cyber hygiene, I would suggest to you spend six of it on effective end-of-life hardware, software, and patching. And the methods are different, whether you have your um, workload on-prem or in cloud. Spend about $3 in identity and access and monitoring and 10% of your hardest problem in the cyber hygiene. Why do I say that? Because we cyber professional get attracted to solving small problems and, and put all of our technology effort in that. Then moving to the right, really critical again, as me as a security provider to the rest of GE, I need, we need to ensure that offense informs our defense, meaning we need to use actual attacks to build defenses in IT and OT. Many of the products and services that we're developing are starting to really put those elements uh, technically into our product offering. On the left-hand side, many of the speakers talked about this. Automation agenda for cyber leaders is critical. We no longer rely on eyes on the glass, on analysts who, you know, delve into millions of lines of logs to really 
do the work that we need to do. So automation and defense for scale. And that applies equally to how we think about risk and compliance and automated and monitoring. And, and the piece in the middle is actually exercising our resiliency muscle. This is not so, so much about us as cybersecurity professional, but it's getting our leadership, our people ready into when that thing happens, um, which happened to some of us with WannaCry, is that people don't freak out on you. They know that there is a commander. They know that they understand the role, whether they're business people, your legal, your external counsel, and they can be part of the solution with you. So those are the five principles that we live by. And I would say lastly, um, I am very proud to say that I'm the first uh, woman, female, a GE uh, that has the title of uh, uh, global CISO for the company, and I take every opportunity. Thank you for that. I'm honored. I really appreciate that. But I was saying that not for the cloud, but to say that as I look in the audience and I look at my organization, there aren't too many female technologists, and women um, take 55% of the world. We have in the U.S. data that I'm sharing with you only 10% in engineering and 25% in IT. I'd love to come back to this conference year over year and just see more women researchers and technologists that are taking the seats. So I'm making it my agenda, and I'm hoping that you will do too. Thank you for the honor.